Alright, so this is a suggestion via a donation. The name of the video is, uh, Scientists just announced the system alert reveals that something big is waking up under Alaska. Let's go ahead and jump into this immediately, guys. Each year, scientists, researchers, and everyday people make incredible discoveries, helping us to better understand the world around us. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at interesting discoveries. Okay. Volcano researchers discovered a potential supervolcano in Alaska. As it turns out, there might be a supervolcano lurking in the shadows of Alaska. Let's just hope it's not like secretly Denali, guys. A supervolcano which, according to some scientists, could have a great global impact should it erupt. The Great Sitkin Volcano in Alaska has erupted, putting the local surrounding areas in a frenzy. The US Geological Survey placed a red warning alert in place due to a prospective buildup of volcanic ash in the atmosphere surrounding the volcano and being spread by the winds to nearby areas. The Alaska Volcano Observatory claimed that the volcanic eruption was a short-duration eruption, which lasted only about two minutes. Despite the short amount of time it was erupting, the event was described as explosive and formed a shocking huge ash cloud, which grows to 15,000 feet above sea level. In the official report, the team stated, since that explosion occurred... Guys, apparently it was uh, April 10th, guys. Seismicity has reduced, and satellite images reveal that the ash cloud has been separated from the vent and is moving towards the east. Of all volcano eruptions within the past 200 years, Alaska alone has contributed to three-quarters of the ratio. The scientists researching the volcanic activity in Alaska were amazed when their research provided them with proof of what could be Alaska's very own supervolcano in the Aleutian Islands. Guys, we definitely it's do thought not that need the islands could actually be an one. entire volcano, nearly on par with Yellowstone's caldera. John Power, who is a geophysicist at the Alaskan Volcano Observatory, claims that this suspected supervolcano, if it indeed exists, must be colossal and might have played a part in disturbing past civilizations all over the globe. Diana Roman, who worked with John Power as a co-author of the study, believes that if the supervolcano theory is correct, it would help provide evidence and an explanation behind Mount Cleveland's semi-regular explosive activity. Mount Cleveland is known as one of the most active volcanoes. So basically, like, within our lifetimes, this has not affected us at all. Uh, so it tells me that there's probably something coming from this very specific region, hopefully not in our anytime recent lifetime, because we don't need anything else Guys, we don't need anything else going on in this world, guys, right? Um, but yeah, it basically tells me that we're looking at a lot of soon recent earthquake uh, on the west coast of the United States of America, along with most likely, unfortunately, hopefully not, right, massive volcano activity coming from Alaska. Volcanoes in the northern American region in the past two decades. Mount Cleveland's ash clouds in general rise to be about 15,000 to 30,000 feet above sea level. Michael Poland has commented on this case of volcanic activity and the supervolcano theory, despite not being a part of this particular study, okay. stating that these very large calderas have very large impacts all over the world. Thus, if we discovered the supervolcano, researching it could help explain all sorts of worldly phenomena from modern times, even all the way back to ancient history, if sustainable evidence is found. This elusive could-be supervolcano might just be the key to solving a myriad of mysteries. Michael Poland has added that by analyzing the supervolcano, we'd be able to understand not only why Cleveland is so active, but also to fully calculate future dangers and risks that these volcanoes might cause. Astronomers report the first ever wandering black hole. Previously, we discovered that a small community of astronomers believe that the universe could be made up of millions of tiny, bullet-like black holes, instead of the mis yeah, like nickel size. mysterious concept of dark matter, which has yet to be proved. Today, we explore another bizarre black hole discovery. This time, 
It's the first ever wandering black hole, and you guessed it, it is right here in the Milky Way. Moving at a whopping speed of 28 miles per second, this particular black hole is 5,200 light years away, or at least okay. for now. Right, yeah, According for now. to research, this black hole's wandering nature is down to a natal kick, a huge amount of reactive energy from the supernova explosion which created the black hole. I can be honest right now with you. Uh, this is probably the most terrifying thing I've encountered so far, at least in this video. I'll tell you this. Um, I don't want any black holes anywhere near us, and neither do you guys, obviously. But um, I've never heard of a wandering black hole, and I'm absolutely a, a science fiction junk guys absolutely no doubt here um completely obsessed uh completely obsessed with the sky uh the night sky <laughs> right um and i've never encountered anything like this obviously i know if um if if black holes get near us we will basically be sucked into it um instant life ending scenarios but i do think that we'd actually uh, if it's big enough it, it'll probably be super visible as we start losing things in the sky, I would suspect. Um, but, right. Since this entity is moving at such a rapid pace through the cosmos, it's entirely plausible to question if it really is a black hole at all. Rest assured, astronomers have yeah. conducted ample tests. Um, trust me, I, being, the fact that I've never heard of it, I'm under the impression that, is it really a black hole, guys? I'm not trying to say that I know everything. I don't uh, at all, right? But... Um, I've never heard of it, um, like ever, like, like not even like a glimpse of hearing anything about a, a black hole moving. Generally, everything moves towards the black hole, not the black hole moving. I'm trying to make that make sense. To confirm that it really is. As you may know, black holes are extremely dense, and famously not even light can escape the grasp of their tenacious gravitational forces. Therefore, when a lens detects no light at all, from any part of the spectrum, and measurements show a body with mass greater than is possible for a white dwarf or neutron star, astronomers can confidently determine the presence of a black hole, and this is exactly what they found in this scenario. Not only does it travel across the universe at some 28 miles per second, but this special black hole also spins extremely fast, scientists have added. Okay. Apparently, it spins so fast, its orbital speed is close to the speed of light itself. That is, the maximum rate set out by Einstein according to his theory of general relativity. We clearly have a lot to learn from this anomalous black hole and how many others out there might be wandering the night sky above us. How many more come close to the maximum confines Einstein himself thought possible? Every Again, how does that even work? Uh, <laughs> like, how is it moving? And how is everything that is moving past not being like instantly sucked into it, right? So guys, that this is probably the thing that, uh, as of right now, that I'm gonna probably uh, research pretty thoroughly. Every day we solve one mystery, Go ahead, discovering add that something to the new, notes. are creating Today's new notes. dilemmas for future generations to solve. Equally, trying to solve existing puzzles is by no means easy, and the possibility that there are things we simply will not know the answer to seems to scare us by nature. Yeah. However, time and time again, I don't want nothing to do with a black hole. Science proves that there truly is no limit to what is out there for us right. to learn. I can only imagine. I mean, we also, we as a people know nothing in comparison to uh, you know what, what what is really going on outside of our uh, our atmosphere. In fact, not like that. I mean, we know what we can see through a camera and, and, and hope that we're right. But it is only ever yes. increasing by the day. tiny oddball galaxy discovered lurking in our cosmic backyard. The Hubble Space Telescope has discovered a myriad of galaxies, and recently it's able to add yet another to that list. Astronomers found a group of stars belonging to another unknown galaxy that were believed to be part of the Milky Way, until now. Okay. This hidden galaxy is 30 million light years away from Earth and is isolated from the rest of its surroundings. The team of astronomers were researching NGC, 6752, a star cluster at 13,000 light years from us, which lies on the edge of the Milky Way. After thorough investigation, they realized that NGC 6752 was not a cluster, but rather stars significantly further than initially believed. Mm. 
Luigi Bedin, the Italian astronomer that found the galaxy, commented on the discovery. This was a truly serendipitous find. The galaxy was titled Bedin 1, in honor of its finder. Bedin 1 looks minuscule even under the Hubble telescope's massive magnification, 30 times dimmer and smaller than the Milky Way, explaining why it has not been found until now. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy. Bedin 1, in comparison, is what's referred to as a dwarf spheroidal galaxy, and is one of only 36 galaxies like it known to currently exist within the bounds of our Milky Way and the galaxy of Andromeda. The galaxy is an awe-inspiring 13 billion years old, making it one of the oldest fragments of the early cosmos, as one astronomer referred to it as a living fossil, of what the universe was like when it was still forming. <laughs> Jay Pasachoff, an American astronomer from Massachusetts, commented, It's fun to find something interesting in your backyard that you never knew existed. The Hubble Space Telescope. Is there there going to be a lot more of those that we're going to find over the time. Like, imagine what our knowledge of space and galaxies and, and the overall universes are going to be in 100, guys, no, 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 50 years. With James Webb up there? 50 years, guys. Oops, field of view. Perhaps <laughs> that of a grain of rock. Like, everything we know is just going to be most likely flipped on its end. held at arm's length is so small that it is rare that an extra object peeks into it, but that is what happened this time. The sun is reawakening with cannibal CME. The sun is waking up and coming back stronger than scientists predicted. In late 2021, the Earth was hit with a sizable geomagnetic storm because of the increased number of sunspots on the surface of the Sun. Sunspots are areas of intense magnetic activity, or a magnetic storm, on the surface of the Sun that's because- Like I read somewhere that um, most likely the Sun is going to be the cause of our demise. Um, yeah, guys, most likely. Um, not sunspots, what are they called? Uh, solar, not solar storms. Um, I'll be becomes back. more prevalent <laughs> every 11 years. The it's sun's like the, activity ebbs and flows. These through. these things right here, right? These coming off of the sun are basically going to cook us in like, like a million years or something. Throughout those 11 years, starting from the solar minimum part of the cycle to the solar maximum, which will be occurring around 2025. So as we approach 2025, Solar activity will increase, creating everything from increased auroras to satellite destruction. The most recent sun activity has been a series of CMEs or coronal mass ejections. Basically, CMEs are bubbles of solar material that the sun expels. They are made up of plasma gas with magnetic fields that create issues when they interact solar flare, I think is what it's called, with the Earth's magnetic field. Bill Murta a program coordinator at the Space Weather Prediction Center of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration described this phenomenon by saying, the two magnets are going to come together, and that's going to create this geomagnetic storm. When a CME is expelled, it moves through space, carving a pathway for later CMEs. Once another CME is expelled, it may move more quickly, overtake its predecessor and combine with it. This combination creates CMEs that are larger and larger. This occurrence is called a cannibal CME. These types of geomagnetic space weather storms are interesting to scientists, but they also pose a real-life threat to us. More scientific events like these can impact and interfere with vital pieces of infrastructure like radio communications, power grids, and satellites. So far, nothing has happened on a large enough scale. But if a larger cannibal CME was to occur, the impact might be more serious. The best example of this would be the 12-hour blackout in Quebec, Canada in 1989 after a large solar storm. Unfortunately, it can be difficult to predict space weather. Bill Murta said, We've got some skill in forecasting the solar cycle, but we're not great at it just yet. There are lots of unknowns in the space weather business. From an underground rock that can help us understand how to predict earthquakes, to the discovery of new Jovian moons, to the sun's reawakening. Scientists are helping us understand the mysteries in our world, one discovery at a time.
But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Okay, I'll let you guys know. Uh, my overall opinion is um, the one that stood out to me the most is going to be uh, the wandering black holes. That's something that I'm probably going to obsess over for probably the next, uh, at the very least, couple hours. Because that's going to be my obsession. My, my wife is not going to be happy with the conversations that we have. It's not going to be interesting. Trust me. She's going to, you know, say, oh, you're obsessed with something else today. Yes. And you're going to learn about it. <laughs> right. Um, so that's a super interesting thing. Then also um, the discovery in uh, NGC uh, 6752, um, finding a new galaxy. Uh, guys, I honestly expect that we're probably going to find a lot more. Um, 50 to 200 years. I'll give you that. We're going to have some like like a definitive answer on what really is going on soon. I can almost guarantee that. All right. In my head, at least, I think that's going to be plausible. Um, the others were super interesting also in terms of the uh, volcano in Alaska. Um, that one is probably super detrimental to everyone on Earth's life, livelihood and health, you know. Um, but, yeah, listen, let me know your opinion. In the comments, though, guys, right? And uh, let, also let me know in the comments of the next uh, type of subject we should be checking out, and we will, right? Yeah, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day, and enjoy your day thoroughly.